Good morning, and thank you all for being here today. The Ministry of Health's team of about 275 people are responsible for caring for health and well-being of the general public. In this year's throne speech, there are some key initiatives, some of which will result in legislation that I will be taking to the House in the near future. At the heart of each is, excuse me, at the heart of each of this is the well-being of the people in our community. Top of my priority list is the residential care homes legislation. While all of us want to and should be able to live in our homes for as long as we possibly can, there comes a time for some older persons when residential care is actually better and safer for all concerned. For those instances, we want to ensure the quality of care for our loved ones who cannot safely stay with us at home. We also want to provide support to Bermuda's rest homes as they continue to strive for higher standards. To that end, we are updating our residential care homes legislation to enhance the regulatory framework so that homes can succeed and deliver the best care possible. I want there to be peace of mind for both residents and their families, and I want to make sure that those that are running care homes are able to provide the best care possible. I hope to introduce this legislation in the next, in this current legislative session. Bermuda is proud that radiation therapy is now available to patients locally, and Bermuda Cancer and Health is commended for making this happen on our island in collaboration with many other stakeholders, including the Bermuda Hospitals Board. Naturally, we want hip and future care patients to have access to this care also. Therefore, we are making the necessary updates to our legislation to ensure that HIP and future care can have this coverage. This will be cost neutral for the plans and the government, thanks to the partnership with Bermuda Cancer and Health. It will be much more affordable for patients. More importantly, those requiring radiation can recover at home with the support of their loved ones, family, and friends without the extra cost of overseas trips. I and my ministry are extremely concerned about how much our community has to pay for health care. While many can afford the premiums and co-pays that give access to health care, there are too many in our society who are unable to afford even basic insurance, much less the costly co-pays. We are reviewing how these issues can be addressed to ensure health care benefits become more affordable for everyone. The needs of persons with disabilities is also very important to my ministry. Earlier this month, the Disability Advisory Council and our Aging and Disability Services hosted a town hall meeting to discuss accessibility needs in the community. The dialogue was very helpful, and, we, and it will certainly go a long way in assisting the government in ensuring that its green paper on the future of transport in Bermuda considers the needs of the differently abled persons within our community. If there's one overarching initi initiative that I would like to touch on, it affects all of us, and that is reducing the incidence of chronic diseases and lifespan, excuse me, lifestyle-related health risk. I believe that if this country's population could take an annual physical, it would be considered unwell. Reversing the instances of chronic disease is the highest importance to the Ministry of Health. Indeed, it must be a top priority for the country. The preventable conditions caused by poor lifestyle choices, including obesity and diabetes, cost this country. And that means to you and me, it costs us a lot. We bear the cost not only in millions of dollars, but also in the pain and suffering of individuals who lose quality of life when ill. In the, it, it causes pain and suffering to the heartache of the families who lose loved ones to lifestyle-related diseases. And we bear the cost in substituting economically productive members of society for sick, dependent individuals. With three out of four persons living um, either are in obese or overweight, it is time for us to take a good look at ourselves and take some time to take steps to better improve our life and our health. We are straining our health care resources, and the only way out is to change our lifestyles. That's why the ministry is pursuing interventions, like the recent Taking It to the Streets initiative, which was a community nursing effort that brought free health care screening to members of our community. 
We've also had the 50 Million Steps campaign, and today we are announcing which parish has taken the most steps, which will allow them to win free outdoor exercise equipment to be installed in a park within their parish. The results of the 50 million step, and I'm proud to say that at least at the last count was exceeded. So we've exceeded the 50 million steps. And it will be announced today at our annual Celebrating Wellness event at Victoria Park this afternoon beginning at 4 p.m. This year the focus is on our youth because the ministry wants to start our youngest people on the road to a lifetime of good health. So as you can see, the ministry is actively going about in our community to pursue wellness. Please join us as we celebrate health and wellness and in helping Bermuda walk the walk to a brighter and more healthier future. Thank you. If you ask a question, you have to do 20 push-ups. <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> Yeah, hi, uh, Minister. Uh, regarding the first initiative that you mentioned, what, what's the status of um, specifically Summerhaven at the moment Is in, in terms of its administration? There have been a, a, a change under the previous administration. Well, you would recall that the um, administration process was uh, commenced and conducted through uh, court proceedings, and at the time the magistrate did uh, order for an interim receiver to be appointed uh, within, uh, to, 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 to provide the administration of, soup, of Summerhaven, and that interim receiver is still in place. 